the heavy history of Gaul and Kathmandu from my interviews with Eight Finger Eddie. Oh yeah, Eddie, the most famous expatriate in India. Hourly, mm -hmm. Eddie. He was nothing special. He was not a celebrity high flyer uh, in India like Ram Dass. Ram Dass, oh, please have your deceased spirit enter my house, yeah. Uh, Eddie was earthy, a pleasure and easy to be around. And if you were flipped out, he would feed and shelter you. During his second trip to Gaul, for instance, uh, when he was 44, Eddie welcomed all hippie travelers to live and share food with him at his home in Culver Beach. I explained to his neighbors, oh, look, it's cold on the Arabian Sea coast at night. And uh, I'm simply uh, providing shelter with, for those with no money. Uh, in fact, come on over sometime. You might enjoy it. Eddie's welcome was unconditional, yeah. He sheltered the most extreme junkies, psychopath, flip outs. Uh, Eddie, the master of madness, yeah. You were absolutely free to act out in his space until you start hurting somebody else. Uh, Eddie's free shelter philosophy. Everyone is welcome, unconditionally. I will not ask anyone for money. I will not ask anyone to do any work in the house. Those who wish to contribute may do so. If that's not enough, I'll pay for everything. Okay. Well... <laughs> My name is Earthman. I'm a hippie historian and the author of these reflections about Eddie and the golden age of the hippie trip in Goa and Kathmandu from 1964 to 1973. We had a little wink of, of freedom, extreme freedom, uh, 64 to 73. Happens rarely in modern life. We were young in our early 20s. Uh, jet travel and hitchhiking made anywhere in the world possible to explore. Uh, beautiful, uh, pure LSD, and you know, India's already loaded with hashish and marijuana. So, uh, in fact, my first uh, sight of Eddie was in a little hippie joint in Kathmandu called The Cabin with the best record player in Nepal. Oh yeah, rock and roll in the cabin. Um, the way Eddie danced, so uninhibited, absolutely free, writhing, unselfconscious. <laughs> uh, yeah, the final time I hung out with Eddie was like 35 years later on Anjuna Beach during this 2008-2009 winter season in Goa. Patiently, I interview Eight Finger Eddie at our favorite hippie hangout, Joe Bananas Chai Shop, uh, during a six-week period. And during these interviews, uh, Eddie was 83, and I was a mere 61, yeah. And, um, Eddie, okay, mm. he embodies a unique uh, historical record concerning the hippie history of India and Nepal. The whole trap was <laughs> in Eddie's head. And he's getting old and frail. That's why I jetted over from San Francisco to do these interviews. After returning to my meditation cave on the roads, <laughs> read that. Yearning for Earthlings, the book's all set in grace. Wow. The second of my five memoirs. This is the final.
and fifth of the pentology of my wild and exotic adventure. <laughs> Life, yeah. Oh, Eddie, yeah. Uh, 83 slowly scuffles among the dirt paths, watching out for roots. Uh, he doesn't want to trip over those with his flip-flops, frail legs. Mm -hmm. Eight Finger Eddie, born in Lynn, Massachusetts, on the eighth day of March. Oh, yeah. He was a Pisces his whole life. Mm -hmm. And he was not even one year old when he was born in 1924. Lynn, guys, yeah, can we get a GPS on Lynn, Massachusetts? 80 years ago. Uh, Lynn is situated along the Atlantic coastline, just 14 kilometers north of Boston. Mm -hmm. Old industrial town, reputation for crime. Household income in Lynn during the Great Depression when Eddie was born, uh, far below the normal for Massachusetts. 99,000 inhabitants. Claim to fame for Lynn, a many professional baseball players and that General Electric plant. Mm -hmm. Eddie. The firstborn of seven children. He was born with three fingers on his right hand. Add it all up, you get his nickname, Eight Finger Eddie. Yeah. It's hard for him to learn how to tie shoelaces. Mm -hmm. Eddie's parents, immigrants from uh, Armenian, from Istanbul, and Edward, as he was called as a child. Uh, he started school two years late so he could co accompany his brother George, his younger brother, and when Eddie started school, he spoke no English, only Armenian and Turkish. As a school child, Eddie was uh, uh, dazed by uh, the endless books in the public library. And even more amazed. He could check them out. Oh, yeah. Eddie learned English from his uh, school friends, from reading, and from listening to the radio. Yeah. His father, Misak, owned a cigar and cigarette shop and... Uh, had a one-armed bandit slot machines in there. And Misak owned a few buildings in the neighborhood and rented apartments to tenants. His mother, Milena, was the sister of a Armenian wrestler. And Eddie's earliest memories are playing with his uncle's big wrestling trophy belts. <laughs> yeah. 